Hello and welcome to the Idiot Book Nook Podcast. My name is Blazewing, my pronouns are she, her, and they, them. I am the Reading Dragon, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm Lady Punnett, my pronouns are primarily she, her, sometimes they, them, today's she, they kind of day. And I'm Critter Shy, my pronouns are she, her, they, they, and uh, today is... Uh, today is a sweater and blanket day. So do we refer to you as sweater or blanket? Uh, sure. (laughs) Okay. We are going through Prospero School of Magic, The Return of Merlin, written by A.P. Whitfield. Today we're doing Chapter 4, but just before we get started, if you'd like to follow us on our socials, you can do so at l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash idiot book nook. Also, a couple of housekeeping things to deal with here. The first one being, because we are doing less chapters with each session, we're doing, I think it's roughly two and then talking because some of the language is hard to chew through. Not just that, we've got certain sections that we have to keep an eye open for, so we're only getting two episodes done per session. We're going to be cutting back to one episode per week, unfortunately, and I'm probably going to be releasing that on Mondays. So keep an eye open on Mondays. Once we get to another book, I may ramp it up again to Thursdays. Which reminds me, I still need to send out the books that Old World Charm uh, so kindly sent me. And I read through some of it Mm -hmm. and it's really nice. It's basically a compilation of uh, different poems put together. And they're really nice and they're really lovely. A couple of them have made me emotional and uh, I have a feeling you guys are going to love it. Um, I just Who need to go. needs emotions? Yes, emotions are healthy. Yeah. Emotions are very healthy. What's not healthy is being forced to repress and suppress those emotions. <laughs> That's me. a topic for another point. Yes. That being said, I do need to go on to uh, wherever Old World Charm is actually selling these books and get a fourth copy. So that way all of us have a copy. Mm -hmm. And this also helps with supporting him because he is a lovely person and y'all should go support him. He also has a Twitch channel called Skull for Initiative. You should go check him out. He does Dungeons and Dragons and other gaming stuff. Absolutely. Um, Second... If you hear some noise in the background from Dragon, that is because people downstairs from her are renovating the unit below her. There is nothing we can do about that, and we do apologize sincerely. We're just going to have to grin and bear it. Yep. At least for the time being, they're usually quick about the renovations. So the book that we're reading today is Prospero School of Magic, The Return of Merlin, and we are currently on Chapter 4. With that being said, narrator, are you ready? No. No? I (laughs) love the energy that we've created in the studio today. Does that mean I can go pee? (laughs) (laughs) Why didn't you go pee before we started? You could have gone pee when you got your sweater and blanket. Because I didn't have to go then. (laughs) It's always when you don't have to. And then, like, it... You, when you don't have to, that's when you're doing all the things. It's when you're just sitting down, relaxed, that your body decides to process everything. And it's like, oh, now you have to go. Okay, go quick. I will distract the it'll, audience. It'll be quick. I have a tiny Go quick. Letter. I will distract the audience with my rock collection. I mean. We got a clear quartz here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys might be able to start without me even because I don't see any talking parts for me right away. That being said, yeah, Lady Punnett. Yeah. Narrator, are yeah. you ready? I guess. Let's get this okay. show on the road. Prospera School of Magic, The Return of Merlin, Book 1. Trigger warning, this book contains situations and scenes that may ca- cause people to become triggered. These include, but are not limited to, sexual assault, rape, drugs, drinking, blood, gore, murder, and abuse. Listener's discretion is advised. <clears throat> Chapter 4 Clara sat in utter bewilderment. 
How could she explain this to Daniel? Her tears fell silently onto her lap. Jenna leaned over and wrapped her arm around her to pull her in and hold her as she silently cried into her chest. Sally sat silently. She was not a pureblood and she did not come from a wealthy family, but they were not poor either. Jenna looked back at her girlfriend. Her family was not pushing her to be with a man, but her family was never one but her family was never one for much tradition, and she had a few other siblings to carry on the family name because of her brothers. She took Sally by the hand and kissed it gently. Looking back at Clara, she frowns. I'm pretty sure so this would be an, Jenna. Uh, I think Jenna's a no. new voice. So actually, no, Je um, Jenna's Jenna's the friend of Sebastian. Right. Okay. Yep. So who's 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 I was, Jenna? I was I was Jenna. Okay. Are you going to be okay, Clara? No, I, I don't know. Clara whispers. Anastasia frowns as she watches her oldest daughter. I am so sorry, Clara, but it is for the best. Do you and father even actually love each other, or was it arranged? Clara asked hotly. Anastasia was taken aback by the yes, question. We, yes, we love each other. We met here at Prospero. We shared plenty of classes with each other. You know, you are like your father in many ways, Sebastian. She laughed softly as she remembered their childhood, smiling softly to herself. Buying her lower lip, she looked back at them. He actually stole me from another boy. He was determined to win me over. It was, it wasn't hard. <laughs> I was in an abusive relationship and was too, too scared to get out of it. But Dimitri saved me. My ex had hit me out in the country yard because I had gotten the lead role for Romeo and Juliet, and it was your father who got the part of Romeo. My ex did not like that I was to kiss another. Dimitri and his friends caught my ex hitting me and trying to strangle me. I was so scared, so Dimitri got in a fight with him and won. My ex was expelled that day. She sighs and looks at the shocked looks of her children around her. I... Oh, sorry, that's you, Clara. Blaze, you have something to say? Girl, you got issues? Baggage. I got issues. Clara. You too. I didn't realize. What year was that? Clara asked. Uh, my sophomore year. Anastasia replied and leaned forward to take Sebastian by the hand. Clarence and ex Sebastian exchanged a look and looked back at their mother. During Clara's sophomore year, she had a fling with a boy over the summer when they were in Rhode Island, where they had a vacation home off the water. It was a scary relationship that Clara did not realize would turn out the way it did. At first, Clara did not realize anything was wrong. The boy did not want her to wear makeup at first, telling her she was too pretty for makeup and her natural skin was just perfect without it. So, Clara stopped wearing makeup that summer. Then, next he would get jealous over what she would wear and she had to be careful with what she wore. It requested more until one day he wanted her to prove she loved him by having sex with him. She so would there is not some do it. Coming up here. Hmm? There is some language coming up here. There is do some language want... coming up here. Yep. Her family did not know that he had raped her then and let his friends in on the rape as well as the boathouse. She still had not told them. The only, they only knew about that night she was out in town with him and he had drugged her. She was scared in the bathroom when she called Sebastian to come save her and her ex came into the bathroom. She screamed from him raping her and Sebastian was frantically trying to get to her with her dad and Chester. When they finally got to the got to her, Sebastian almost beat the boy to death. Both the male and Clara were taken to the hospital and charges were pressed on the kid. She never saw or heard from him again after that. 
I didn't know that was how you and Daddy got together. Clara whispered softly, looking down at her hands. Yes. Well, it is always a touchy subject, even after all these years. I let a man treat me bad. Anastasia sighs heavily and plays with her son's fingers. Your father is only looking out for your best interests. I know Daniel is a good boy, and I know his mother is a good woman. I cannot say the same for his father, but that is beside the point. We still have a duty to our pure bloodlines and to our ancestors to live up to our family names. You will become the next queen, and hopefully you can rekindle that love you, that you had for him when you were younger. It was not that long ago. She got up and moved over to her daughter and spoke softly to her. Moving her hair from Clara's visage, she cups her cheek. You can go with Daniel to this ball, but after that you have to tell him, and you have to break it off. Uh, I know the school is a mess right now and things are crazy, but you must start letting the others see you and Wesley together. The public must see and know that the next king of Norway has a suitor and will be getting wed. You cannot be carrying on about this, Daniel. I'm sorry, my sweet girl. Her voice held a pain in it as she looked at the hurt and lost look in Clara's eyes. I'm so, so sorry, Clara. She pulled her in and held her in her arms and rocked her as Clara cried heavily. She did not want to break up with Daniel. She loved him more than anything in the world. Even when they were children, even... Wesley knew Clara had always loved Daniel. Yes, she had a love for Wesley, but it was not the same as the way she loved Daniel. Her and Daniel fell out of touch, though around seventh year. Then came ninth grade, her freshman year, she was ripped away from Wesley. The summer of her sophomore year was hell, and the first summer she did not spend it with Wesley. He had not gotten to come back until now, their junior year of school. I'm going to take Lilith to eat now. I'll come back later to check on Sebastian. Clara got to her feet and took Lilith's hand, who had been quiet the whole time with a sad look on her face. Oh, okay, dear. Well, we'll see you later then. Anastasia replied, watched her leave with Lilith and the other two the other two girls out of the room. I think Sebastian is being done by Blaze. One second. You know, it's not fair, Mum. You cannot make her do this. Sebastian argued. Yes, find me a suitor, but not Clara. Let her be with Daniel. <sighs> I can't change anything, Sebastian. The contract is done. I'm so sorry. Anastasia looked at her oldest with sad eyes. So, Mom, it sounds like, is not too happy about the arrangement either. Or at least she recognizes that it's problematic. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think she would have been fine with it if Daniel hadn't come into the picture, but we'll discuss that at the end of the chapter. Yep. Mm -hmm. Daniel froze for a moment with what he was doing. Something felt off and wrong. He could not place it. A lot of magical energy was building up, and there seemed to be a disturbance with it. Even the dragons were restless from the change of power. In his days, with the heavy levels of energy spreading out, he was hit by a dragon's tail and sent flying back into a stone wall and crashed to the ground. He looked up half-dazed. The tamers and other workers struggled to get it to calm down, killing one of the workers in the process. Struggling to his feet, he let his body heal itself. Holding up his hand, the dragon suddenly fell calm and watched the old wizard. Lowering his hand, the dragon knelt to curl up and was put to sleep. The other men and some girls looked at Daniel in amazement. How did you manage that? You should have been killed or knocked out by that hit. An older man looked Daniel over in wonder. You do not even look like he hit you. Uh, guess I am just that lucky. 
Daniel replied, dusting himself off. Uh, you should get the body of the fallen worker to his family. He nods over to the dead man under a pile of rubble. Go get yourself checked out by the medic while we get the boy out from under the rubble. The man replied to Daniel and walked away from him. He still had a look of question on his face on how Daniel did what he did and how he lived, but he said no more on the matter for right now. Daniel walked away to enjoy a small break, avoiding the medic to go sit off on his own. <coughs> he pulled out his phone to FaceTime Clara. Looking on his shoulder at the shrunken purple dragon, he chuckled. <laughs> yeah. Now, stay out of trouble. He pulled an apple out of his bag that the small creature rang its tail around and had its tongue out like a little puppy. Shh. Hey, they cannot see you. Remember, Amethyst? The excited dragon fell quiet and laid next to his master and ate the green apple. Pressing the, the call button to FaceTime Clara, an uneasy unfe feeling sank into his stomach at the length of time it was taking her to answer until she did. His heart sank at how sad she looked, and it was clear that she had been crying. Clara? What's wrong? He asked sadly. Is Sebastian okay? Yeah, Sebastian's just fine. Hating being on bed rest for eight weeks, but other than that, he's doing much better. Clara replied and cleaned the tears from her face. She sat in the cafeteria with Lilith, Jenna, and Sally. They all looked at her with worry and concern. They did not even know how to comfort her, or the advice to give. Then why are you crying? Daniel let out a shaky breath and swallowed hard. His gut was telling what it was without him reading her mind this time. This time? Oh, well, last chapter, he did say that this happened before. So there's that theory that he's, like, doing this whole time loop bullshit no, thing. No, reading her mind. This isn't even about I, time I, I loop. It's mind reading. I don't think he means it literally. I think yeah. he just means, like, in, like instinctually. Oh, I, think he means it I think he means it literally. Well, we have a lot of theories that we will discuss after the chapter. We will discuss at the end of the chapter. <laughs> I'm leaving all Daniel's of the, line. I'm leaving all of this discussion in, by the way. Just That's I don't fine. have the time or the patience to edit it all out, and I think it's more hilarious for context. So That's it's fine. You have to break up with me, don't you? His voice cracked slightly as he watched her break down. I don't want to. <laughs> I she want sobbed. to stay. Well, I want to stay with you. My father is marrying me off. I have no say. Daniel felt like it was a repeat of his past when she was Morgana. The wind felt like it was knocked out of him. I, I, I see. Um, marriage for status and power. Um, something my family cannot offer. His tone of voice was hurt and broken, even back when he did not have a title and wealth to offer King Arthur's father to be able to wed Morgana, even though he loved her more than anything. It was no different now, it seemed. The world had changed very little for the realm of magic. I don't care about any of that. I love you. I want you. Please just come take me away. I don't want to be here. She sobbed as Lilith hugged her big sister as she cried tears of her own. Jenna bit back her own tears and pulled Sally in that seemed to have joined the crying, leaving only Daniel and her being the two trying not to break down. Oh, Clara, I wish I could, but if I took you, if I did that, we would be adding to the problems at the school and we would both be in trouble. More so, me. Daniel looked away sadly from his phone to look at his dragon. The big green eyes looked up at his master sadly. I love you, Clara. 
I do not want to let you go, but if I do not, and we keep on with our relationship, then you will be labeled as a harlot. And I don't want that. You don't deserve that because of me. I don't care. I love you, and I want you, regardless of the consequences. She sobbed to him. Pain hit her head and started to make her feel sick and lightheaded. Parts of her memory started to glitch on and off, colliding with her memories now. Images of those same blue eyes collided with her dreams, or at least what she thought was dreams. The kisses she shared with him yesterday mixed with kisses Morgana and Merlin exchanged in secret in the woods and in dark places in the castle. Ooh. Oh my. Oh my. It just said kisses. It did not say anything more, people. Come on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Stop uh -huh. being thirsty. <laughs> Have you uh -huh. met me? Uh -huh. Never! Daniel, you're up. Uh, Clara? Daniel got to his feet quickly. Clara, can you hear me? Jenna moved from Sally quickly to catch Clara as she passed out. Lilith grabbed the phone and looked at him with big, sad eyes full of tears. I thought it's... See, it's my, copy says, my copy says sad eyes full of fear. That's what ours oh, says, sorry. too. Sorry, I read it too quickly. <laughs> it's all good. Sad eyes full of fear. Uh, Clara passed out. I, it, I no, don't know what's Lilith's wrong. Line. That's, Lil that's Lilith's line. Oh, that's Lilith's line? Yeah, because Lilith can't grab the phone. Thanks. Uh, okay. Thanks, Lilith. <laughs> I thought it was Jenna. No, I'm Jenna sorry. caught. No, Jenna caught Clara. Lilith okay. caught the phone. Okay. Clara, so, Clara passed out. I don't know what's wrong. Chester, move the students out of the way. So he could get to Clara and lift her in his arms. Also, isn't Lilith supposed to be like eight years old, not 14? What's that got to do with grabbing a phone? Because No, because of how uh, Blaze sounded when voicing Lilith. Lilith is the baby sister. I would like to point out that sometimes when we're going through trauma, our voices deepen. Also, I can't do I, I can't do children voices, so... Fair enough, okay. You're just going to have to use your imagination. Ah, oh, fuck. Clara's been smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell mom. I mean, with all the stress that she's being put through right now, I can imagine that she probably had to pick up some unhealthy coping mechanism. Top of the paragraph. Chester moved the students out of the way so he could get to Clara and lift her and lift her up in his arms. I will get her back to the hospital wing. The girls followed the tall man quick mail quickly. Jenna grabbed the phone from Lilith and pierced her lips together. You mean pursed? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like pierced. Yeah, it is pierced. I'm I'm assuming it's supposed to be pursed. Give me one second. I'm just gonna add a quick note here. Yeah. Um, this this chapter's actually been doing pretty good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So good on the person. Um, I am on my way. Daniel grabbed his things and left the work site. Good. Jenna hung up the phone. Moments later, they entered back into the hospital wing, and Anastasia was on her feet quickly. What happened? Worry coated her voice. Being forced to break up with the man she loves happened. She passed out from the stress. Jenna, Jenna said to Anastasia with a cold tone in her voice. You and Dimitri caused this. I wish the only problem I had was the stress of having to break up with the person that I love. I would like to point out, though, that it looks like Clara has dealt with a lot of other trauma before. <sighs> we'll get I'll, to that on the conversation. I'll give you we'll that. We'll get to that in the conversation. Save it for, save, put a pin in it until the end of the chapter. Anastasia oh. watched Chester. Nope. What? Oh. Oh, Clara. Anastasia watched Chester lay Clara down on the bed next to Sebastian, who had a broken, sad look for his sister on it. I no. have a feeling that sentence needs to be restructured a bit. 
Will she be Will okay? Be. A soft English accent asked from behind them. Oh. Anastasia looked over to see Wesley, who held sad blue eyes that seemed to have a hint of guilt in them, as they should. Yes. Wesley was in the same house as Sebastian, just a year younger. He had loose, curly blonde hair and was fair complexion with blue eyes. He was about 5'10 in height and had a slim but built figure. Wiry. I, I believe so. She's, she's just under a lot of stress. Anastasia replied sadly. It's all my fault. Wesley whispered. Mother and father should have made this happen. I should never have made this happen. I am very sorry. He hung his head as he stood with his hands behind his back with perfect posture. Oh, oh no, sweetie. This is not your fault. Anastasia got up and went over to him, lifted his chin, and looked him at him sadly. This is not your fault. She will be okay. Today has just been really emotional for her. And Daniel's arrived. No, nope, that's still Wesley. Nope. No, this is Daniel. This is Italian. Cold Italian voice. Nope. Came from oh, behind okay. Wesley. Oh, okay. I guessed that. You were the one they chose to marry her off to. A cold Italian voice came from behind Wesley. Wesley looked behind him and came face to face with cold blue eyes of Daniel. What is so if cold? looks could kill, Wesley would have found himself dead where he was standing. Everybody's so cold. Everyone is so cold today. Like, I think we need like a pillow for it. They need blankets. They need blankets. They need Ooh. it's sweater weather. They need to have some sweaters, some blankets, maybe a nice cozy fire. <laughs> Anyways, um... So, I just need to, like, pull up Breaking Benjamin's So Cold and have that playing in the background now. Okay, uh... If looks could kill, Wesley would have found himself dead where he was standing. I'm sorry, Daniel. I had no say in the matter either. I found out today. I did not want to burden her with this, with me. He still had a look about him that, that was still a bit sickly, but not like he used to have when he had gotten deathly sick. He had color back in his complexion and he had more meat on his bones. Wesley was still rather slimmer than Daniel, who had more muscle on him that came off intimidatingly. Other, hold on. Let me try that. Keep going. Daniel, who had more muscle on him, that came off intimidating. Other than his serious exterior, he always held like that of Sebastian. Whew. Then do something about it. Daniel growls lowly at Wesley, oh. over as if he were debating on hitting him. Violence is never the answer, Daniel. I feel like I need Daniel. to redo that. I feel like I need to redo that line. You're good. If he's got a growl. You're good. If, if you want to try to do it with a growl, go ahead. Then do something about it. Daniel growls lowly as he looked at Wesley over as if he were debating hitting him. I cannot. I have no power on this. Wesley held his ground. He may be smaller than Daniel. But he was just as skilled in areas of fighting and just as fast, regardless of him being sick. Oh, okay, how about, how about you both separate? Anastasia asked and gently pulled them both away on opposite sides of the bed from one another. Oh yes, because one bed is going to stop them, Anastasia. They're wizards. <laughs> they don't need to touch each other to hurt they each other. really don't. And Vicious mockery on... is a thing. Or... Yeah, dep depending on what magic is being, what kind, how magic works in this world. You're a wizard, Wesley. Actually, You're a wizard, it's... Danny. <laughs> no, wait. Okay, I think we're about to hit this spicy. Bit. Okay, let me let me quickly go take a look here. That's it. Uh. <laughs> We've hit the uh, spicy bits, haven't we? I'm going oh, to... Uh, it's about like a page in... I'm going to mark... 
the oh, fuck? I didn't know. Wait, what? There it is. I'm going to just go ahead and mark that, so I will cut you off when we get there. Okay. So you're just going to say a word to cut me off? Yep. 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 What, what's the word for the cut off? Oh, no, I'm just going to I'm just gonna cut you off. I'm just going to cut you off. Just keep reading. Just okay. Keep reading. Blinking her eyes and the brightness of the sunlight, this... Blinking her eyes and the brightness of the sunlight, the sound of rustling leaves could be heard. Sitting up, she looked around, confused. A breeze made her shiver. Looking down, she realized she was not dressed. What? Keep just looking. Keep going. <laughs> looking up to hear footsteps, she grabbed what looked like a dress woven in fine fabric to cover her bare dress. Her bare chest. Morgana. Morgana. Oh. Hold on, this I is... I think I... this is Berlin. Oh. Berlin. Okay, go ahead. Morgana? Uh, you're awake. His voice was soft, and his blue eyes held love for her. Morgana? What? I'm Clara. She looked him over and realized he was Merlin. He favored Daniel a bit, and her heart started to pound. Morgana? Merlin knelt to her and cupped her flushed cheek. Are you okay? Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm still in shock that we just did, well, you know. She laughs softly and nods to the fact she was still undressed. Oh, uh -huh. right. He chuckles in embarrassment. His cheeks flushed over. A dream. Is this a dream or a memory? She questioned. She glanced and noticed the amethyst hanging around his neck and the dragon ring with an amethyst in the center. She traced her fingers over it and looked up into those blue eyes that she knew so well. She bit her lip, then leaned in to kiss him deeply. And scene! <laughs> Things well done, <laughs> guys. We're gonna take a five minute break while we figure out the shit show that's here. So just bear with us, please. We will be. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll be right back. We shall be right back. Uh, as soon I have as I... to read things. You do have <laughs> to read things. Absolutely. Just bear with me for <laughs> one moment while uh, I potentially get my touch portal up and running. Maybe oh. potentially. Uh, here we go. Back oh, in a moment. Crazy in one paragraph. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Oh dear. Yeah. We're so we're gonna fade to black. Um, we're still talking with the author about what we're doing for these scenes because we don't want you guys to miss out on this awesomeness. But we're trying to figure out where that's going. So bear with us. We'll be back in about five. You are our favorite vanilla bean. Thank you. It all felt so real to Clara. Every touch, every moment. This could not be a dream. It had to be a memory. But she could not understand how. Merlin was not real, right? He was just in storybooks that she had read and loved since she was a child. His necklace and ring, though, and those blue eyes. It was Daniel. That same smirk. The way he carried himself and would talk. Merlin had an Italian accent? Mm. Maybe more mm -hmm. like how he chooses his words. Yeah. Mm. Like, uh, his, uh, like his mannerisms and speech. Maybe. Her mind was racing that was mixing with pleasure and reality. Oops. Oops. That's Jenna. Is she okay? Her face is flushed. Is she feverish? Jenna looked with worry. Anastasia placed her hand on Clara's forehead and cheeks. She shook her head and looked down at her daughter... At her daughter's confused. Daniel! The little shit covered his mouth to hide the smile and laugh he was holding in from watching her thoughts come to surface and what a beautiful memory it was she was having. Uh-huh. He remembered that day as if it were yesterday. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure he does. 
it was his first time, and he thought it was her first time as well. But at the time, he did not realize it was not hers, or the reason to why it was not. Ooh. Okay. Clara groaned and placed a hand on her forehead. Merlin. <laughs> she mu murmured. No, wait, 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 wait. Merlin. <laughs> she murmured. Stop lifting your tail. Anastasia questioned in confusion. Uh, are you still reading those ridiculous books? When will you stop being obsessed with someone who isn't even real? She asked with concern in her voice. Look, it is a part of the LGBTQ community to be attracted to fictional people, Mom. Respect yep. it. There's even a flag for it. And I found that out purely by accident. Daniel rolled his eyes and shook his head as he watched Clara come to. Her eyes locked onto his, and she gave him a look that showed she'd figured it out. That she knew who he really was and who she was. He adjusted his posture and looked away, only to see very angry look of his father advancing without a care of the onlookers and struck him. Stop! Wesley yelled and caught the next blow and met with the very angry eyes of his professor. Clara covered her mouth in shock and horror, and her mother quickly wrapped her arm around her and Lilith protectively, while Chester placed himself in front of them. Jenna pulled Sally behind her and glared at the older male. Sebastian pushed the covers away and moved to get up. Sebastian? Oh, wait. That is Chester. Sebastian, you cannot get up. Chester we scolded. It. We can handle this. Wiping the blood from his mouth, he looked back at his father and held a somewhat shocked look that Wesley was protecting him. Leave him alone. That is an order. If you dare defy me, I will tell my father and he will have your job. My father will hear about this! Uh, <laughs> hey, sometimes it can be useful. Yeah, Wesley sometimes it can be useful. said with authority and lack of fear in his voice. Do you understand? Professor Smith Sr. glared at the young prince back at Daniel like he would kill him for this but Daniel held no fear it was not anything new to him he had suffered much greater than the anger of a man like this do you understand do not make me repeat myself Wesley said says to him looking up into his eyes of course your majesty my apologies for trying to discipline my disobedient son he is rather disrespectful. Professor Smith Jr. growls. Turning on his heels, he walked away. He was nowhere near done with his son, and Daniel knew it. He didn't bow. He did not bow. The disrespect of this dude. Mm -hmm. His face still stung, and he looked away slightly embarrassed that Clara even had to see that. And what was worse to him was that the man that's supposed to be... Stealing, not stealing. Yep. That the man stealing Clara away from him was the one to protect him. The timid nurse rushed over to him to gently work on healing him. He allowed her because he would not use his powers yet to do it. He did not want to risk giving away who he was, but now that Clara knew there was not much he could do to hide it much longer, the question would be, would Clara let it all slip? More than likely not. I don't know. I read ahead to just check to see if there's any more smut. <clears throat> Anastasia. Daniel. Daniel, look at me. Anastasia said to him as she knelt in front of him when where the nurse when the nurse made where the f Anastasia said to him as she knelt in front of him where the nurse made him sit down to treat him. Daniel. How long has your father been hitting you? It broke her heart to see that the beautiful little boy she watched grow up and playing with her children was being treated in such a way. You, you can talk to me. Dimitri can help you and your mom. Dimitri shook, uh, Daniel shook his head and made the nurse stop her treatment on him. I am fine. I left Norway without permission. That Wesley, is no reason to hit your kid. 
Wesley licked his lips and looked back at Clara, who held a sad, broken look. Which? This Clara. is it says this she is Clara. De- Yeah, it says she demanded. The hell? Where am I? You are right here. You could have stopped him. Thanks. You could have stopped him. Why have you not stopped him? She demanded. Why are you... Clara, enough. Daniel cuts her off before she said too much. But... She tried to go on. I said enough. Daniel got to his feet. I should go. I'm glad you are awake and okay. That's it? You're you're just going to leave just like that? Clara, just got up. walk away. Oh, sorry. Stop licking your tail. You're going to give yourself a bald spot. Yeah, Daniel. That is not in the book. I'm talking to my cat. I yeah, Daniel, stop licking your tail. You're going to give yourself a bald spot. <laughs> when was the last time you brushed your cat's tail? No, it's a soothing thing. He's always uh, licked his tail ever since uh, he was a baby. Uh, uh, Clara got up quickly as anger built up in her. So is she standing on the bed then? No, she's probably getting out of bed. Clara got up quickly yep. as anger built up in her. Why are you running from this? Why hide? Clara, will you just shut up and stop? Kitty, don't you stop this. Daniel turned on her and met her angry, hurt eyes. He breathed heavily and met with everyone else's concerned eyes. He knew they all thought he was covering up the abuse, but the truth was he was covering up the bigger secret of him being Merlin. I, I have to go. Clara grabbed grabbed his arm and held tight to it. You're Merlin. And with just that, she just revealed it. Clara! Clara, you're an idiot. Clara, stop being a Mary Sue. You can't reveal someone else's secrets in front of your whole family. We'll talk about We'll talk about that. Just bear with us. We got feelings about this. Take note of it. Let's get through the chapter and then we'll talk. Okay, okay, okay. Daniel's expression fell, and he dropped his arm. Please. Please, not here. Not now. You're not supposed to know yet. None of you are. He ran his fingers through his hair. (laughs) Clara, you cannot be serious. Marilyn is not real. Anastasia looked at her daughter like she had lost it, which is very possible. Yes, I am. Daniel sighs heavily and waves his hand to show them bits from his past and his timeline with Clara. And Clara is Morgana. Uh, She just realized who she was. She never truly forgot who she was. It was just suppressed. She is the reincarnation of Morgana. This is just the first time she actually looks like she did back then. They were all watching in disbelief. I have not been called Merlin in a long time. He said sadly. When was the last time you were called Merlin? Sebastian asked. He when did Sebastian the... pick up his dad's accent? Sorry. <laughs> when was the last time you were called Merlin? Sebastian asked. He believed the stories and what he was seeing. He had noticed since they were children how different Daniel was and how he would argue with the professors over lessons and how things should be done in arguing with them over history. Constantly correcting them. How could he not be Merlin? I guess I should explain everything. It is a long story. Daniel sighed. 
Camelot, the kingdom ruled by King Uther. They were on good terms with the kingdom of Pen uh, Prenite. I, of course, was the royal wizard for Camelot. Although for years I hid from my king and best friend what I was. By being his servant boy until the time came and his life was in danger. Then I became the royal wizard of the kingdom. I had not known that all of the royal families were magically gifted and that they hid it from the churches and the public. If the outside world knew of what they could do, they would scream heretics and burn them all at the stake. So it has always been hidden aside from me, which to everyone else I was, the castle healer, not a wizard. Anyways. Daniel explains. Years passed and Donatello Cameron, your ancestor, came to me with a problem that consisted of sealing away immortal beasts or beings. I showed him and taught him what to do. From there on, he took on that dangerous task, knowing the risk for generations to come. He looked at the others, his look staying the same. If my hunch is right. Whatever Donatello sealed away has now come back. He sealed quite a great deal away, as have, as have I. I do believe that is the problem the school is now facing. But I will come back to that. He rambled nervously. They were all listening to him intently. I met my beautiful Morgana Le Fay, half-sister and adversary to King Arthur. I were but a child when I, found, but when I was found by my mentor and taken to the castle. I was an orphan. My family abandoned me on my twelfth birthday. They feared what I was, and they did not understand me. I tried to use my gifts to help make their lives easier, but they thought I was evil, the devil. So, on my birthday, they drug me out of the house and tied me to a stake and tried to burn me alive. He winced at the memory that played out for everyone to watch like it was a live movie. Anastasia covered her mouth and sobbed at the sight of a little boy that was Daniel screaming and begging for his life. The painful scream and image were too much and she felt sick to her stomach. Wesley ran his fingers through his blonde locks and tried to stomach the images. Everyone was frozen in fear and sadness. Clear sounds of sobbing could be heard. I screamed until my throat was bleeding. I managed to get free with a bit of magic that is when I learned of my powers and their ability to heal myself. Or, and, eh, sorry, that is when I learned of my powers to heal myself. That it does this thing. Like, it glows this purple and gold lightning and gives a warm feeling that rushes through me. I can also heal others that are hurt. For example... He walked over to Sebastian and a gold alchemy ring appeared from his hand and glowed as it healed Daniel, or Sebastian. As it healed after, Sebastian. After that, I was alone. Very lonely. Lonely and hungry. No one in the village would help me. They thought of me as filthy and wanted me hung. They knew what I was. I started to steal from the stable to survive to eat. Living alone in the woods outside of town was when I learned how to bring this dragon, I imagined, up to life. That is when I discovered that I could do alchemy. I am still the only one to ever create a dragon that I can at will make appear and, gave a, and give a life to. This is Amethyst. The small purple dragon crawls up on his shoulders, flapping its wings happily making Lil clap her hands in excitement. Taking his hand away from Sebastian after healing him, leaving them all in amazement, aside from Clara, he sat Amethyst on Lil's lap to let her love on him. It was winter. I was cold, with no food and nowhere to go. 
I had passed out from starvation when my mentor found me and took me in, fed me, and clothed me. After so long, he took me to Camelot, where I first laid eyes on Morgana. She was so beautiful, it took my breath away, even as a small child. Her beautiful smile and those blue pools of her eyes that you could get lost in. He looked over at Clara, smiling fondly at her. I knew then I was in love. Not but a child, and I was love-struck by this beautiful maiden that was out of my social status. About, like, now. He laughed sadly. <laughs> she was a wonderful and beautiful girl, brave and kind. She was a beauty to behold, and I was lucky enough to call her mine. Then, many years later, darkness fell on the kingdom, times of war, with death laying waste to the land. It was December. King Arthur was ruling, and to try and lift so many spirits, he wanted to have a ball. So he did. It was the last ball I had with Morgana, who was pregnant with my child. She was no more than two months along, and I could not be happier to become a father, and Arthur granted his blessings for me to marry his sister. He never cared about marrying for power, status, or money. The village and castle was attacked, and we had to act fast. I kissed Morgana one last time, and rushed to the front line to protect the castle. Before then, I had cast a spell so that every decade or so, her and Arthur would come back. I would know who they were before they would. They would be reincarnated. Anyways, I, I'm rambling. I invented these magical chains and cuffs that would help prevent another magical being from being able to do any type of magic to help capture them. I thought I was the only one who had the spell for that. But someone stole it from me and created their own set. I was captured and taken to our enemy's kingdom and chained up in the dungeon and tortured mercilessly for information on King Arthur and the kingdom. However, I would not talk. I was drugged and I, I honestly don't know what all they did to me. I was out of it, but I would never talk. Months pass. So the next uh, bit is Clara. Fair warning, there is some discussions that can be triggering mm -hmm. in this paragraph. I thought you were dead. I thought they figured out how to kill you. So did Arthur. We tried to get you back, but we failed. I was so depressed and broken. I remember it was springtime and the tulips were starting to bloom. I was showing. I couldn't help but wonder how excited you would be with how close we were to having our baby. We were supposed to have been wed in December, but that didn't happen. My ladies in waiting and I went to the village to go to the market, and on the carriage there was an ambush. My ladies and I were captured. Clara choked on a sob and her tears stung her eyes as Daniel let her memories fill in the blanks where he missed. He was not prepared to see what he he was not prepared to see what he was about to see. This is Clara. I didn't know Merlin was still alive. I had been living through hell for so many months. My ladies and I were separated, but I could hear their screams from being raped, then suffered the same fate. I was chained to the bed, pregnant, raped, beaten. Jenna covered Lilith's eyes at the graphic images that played out. Finally, I was taken to... I was taken and, and beheaded. Uh, yeah, and beheaded. Daniel. They brought in a basket to me and sat it down where I was chained up. Daniel felt sick to his stomach at seeing the sight again. It held her head, 
and they had carved out my unborn child, placing him in the blanket next to his mother's head. I could see him struggling for life, and I tried to get free to get to him, to save him, but I could not. I could not save him. I could not save her. I failed them both. Something in me stopped, and I don't know what or how I even managed it, but I broke free and laid waste to that kingdom and leveled it, wiping it away from existence. I took my dying son in my hands, and I struggled to save him. He was so small and had not fully developed. I could not lose him. I couldn't. I was so lost and broken. And I lost him. I had yet to realize what all I could fully do and was capable of. I had not yet understood my powers for healing and how it affected me. Daniel closed his eyes and let out a shaky breath and went on with his story. I took them both back to Camelot, as making sure to place their bodies where the guards would find them. After that, I set off on my own, skipping all the way to the last time I had heard my actual name was in the, tw was in the 20s. I was in New York at night at a nightclub where I saw her across the room with another man that was her fiance. Yeah. She was about 23, I believe. Her hair was pin curled up and had a gold diamond headdress on with a black and gold flapper dress and black gloves that came up to her elbows. She had on fishnets and her black Mary Janes. Felix's lips and chuckled. It was her laugh that caught my attention first, that made me look over at this beautiful blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl. She looked up to see me sitting at the bar, and somehow I piqued her interest. A mutual friend of ours came over to me and nods to the girl. He told me who she was and told me a bit of her story. She got up and came over to us and asked us to join them. I, of course, of course I did. I normally tried to not interfere in her relationships if she already had a life going for her, but I could not help myself that time. I was missing her and craving her. So we had an affair that lasted for a year. We did a lot of sneaking around and our mutual friend help, uh, helped us with it. He hated her fiance. The night she remembered everything we were at my flat in New York. It hit her in a big rush. We were planning to run away together. She was going to tell her fiancé she was leaving him, and we were going to meet at the train station the next morning to go off together. Our friend knew and helped arrange everything. When her memory came back, it was a mix of emotions. She said my name, and I felt so many emotions over it. But she left. Clara? I left and went home to my fiancé. I told him I was leaving him, and that it was over. I started to pack my things when he jerked me by my hair and threw me to the bed. He was so mad. <laughs> he figured out who it was I was leaving him for, he planned to kill him. He screamed and cried, trying to get him away. When he started to beat me. Beat me almost to death. And then took his gun and shot me. I never made it to the train station. Clara said to them sadly. Daniel. I waited and waited. I knew something was wrong when she did not show up. Our friend came running into the station to find me and told me everything. I quickly left and made it to her house in the suburbs she had with the man. When they 
brought out her lifeless body and the man in cuffs. I felt sick to my stomach, much like I do now. That was the last time my real name was said. Daniel said to them and made the tragic, gory pictures vanish. I am Merlin of Camelot, King Arthur's royal wizard. He gave them a slight bow. Shock to the news coated the room as they all processed the information that was shown and told to them. It was a lot to take in. Daniel did not blame them for being silent or for their expressions. His story was not exactly a fairy tale as in the books. And Wesley... also, Merlin is still the same, which means he old as fuck. Yep. Wesley was the first to look back at him. His expression was serious and somber. I am very sorry for all that you have been through. I'm sure there is more to your story. But I understand that you do not wish to share it all. But what I do not understand is how you went from being an adult to a child. Daniel chuckled sadly. <laughs> uh, funny story. Not really, but... Um, I have been in a lot of wars. A lot. I was in Afghanistan when... The truck I was in with other soldiers I oversaw was bombed. I was alive, but not doing well. Reinforcements came in and took me into a hospital on base and sent me to one off base for better treatments. The injuries were rather bad, and it is very hard to hide being what I am around a lot of non-magic kind, plus them being mortal where I am immortal. I was so close to death, if not for me being me, that when I was finally alone long enough to heal myself, I overshot it and ended up being an eight-year-old. Oof. <laughs> Dang, Daniel. You had to go through puberty a second time. Oh, God, that is awful. Speaking from experience, the second time's usually the better one. Ah, yeah, I, okay, fair enough. So... I was left with having to create this pretend family. I got out of the hospital and found myself in Italy, where I made a portal to create some distance away from where I had been. That is where I saw my mum. Other kids seemed to, so taken with her. She had kind eyes and a kind smile. Her husband was a bit rough, but I paid it no mind. I had put up with men like him my whole life, and I thought she needed me so I could keep her safe. So I do. I take the worst of it so she, so he will not hurt her. I charmed them to think I was their son. I did not <clears throat> want her to be hurt anymore. And oh, Daniel. Anastasia whispers and clears her tears away to pull him in and hold him. You brave, sweet boy. Oh, um, this is, um, okay, you can stop hugging me. Daniel shifted uncomfortably at the kind gesture. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I made you uncomfortable. Anastasia chuckled as she cleaned her eyes. All of you cannot tell anyone about all of this. You will not be safe. I have a long list of enemies that would love nothing more than to use one of you to get back at me. He explained. Promise to keep this information a secret. Y yes, of course. Sebastian got to his feet and held out his hand to shake the males. You have my word. We will all keep this between us, I promise. Jenna nods to him. I just cannot believe you are both real. Sally was a bit awestruck from it all. I cannot either. So where is Arthur? Chester asked from where he sat. Have you ever found him again? Not yet, but... I do believe he is here, and he is aware of who he is. 
He's just avoiding me for now. Daniel shifted in a spot where he was standing. No one honestly knew where to go from here with all this information. It was a lot to process and the images could not be unseen. They all went silent for a moment till Wesley looked over at the old wizard before him. He did not say anything at first, but after a few moments, he walked over to him. The immortals and the threat on the school. What do you know about them and how can we stop them? Thus ends chapter four. And we're, I am, Daniel. So we're going to actually have our discussion during the next episode. So bear with us. As we as, take a moment to already break. <laughs> as we take a moment here. Um, there's a lot of information in here. We will get to that. Just bear with us. For those of you listening to the podcast, we will see you next episode. Um, if you'd like to follow us on our socials, you can do so at L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Idiot Book Nook. You'll be able to find our podcast, all of our socials and whatnot. Um, this has been Chapter 4 of Prospero School of Magic, The Return of Merlin, um, written by A.P. Whitfield. Mm-hmm. We hope you've enjoyed this. And um, yeah, for the Idiot Book Nook, I'm Blazewing. I am the Raiding Dragon. I'm Lady Punnett. And I'm Crittershy. And we'll see you next episode, which is discussion of chapter four. Bye! Bye!